time that they do not have a legacy that facilitator. I am also a North Carolina certified peer support specialist. I've been in this field for about 12 years now, and I want to share with you an overview about what RAP is and how I have applied it to my life. Okay, so RAP um, is a curriculum practice that was developed by a group of people who had been dealing with difficult feelings and behaviors, who worked together to feel better and get on with their lives. It was led by a lady named Mary Ellen Copeland, and she um, is a person that had experiences of mental health challenges, and she was seeking new ways to take care of herself and feel better. So who could use RAP? Anyone can use RAP who wants to increase their enjoyment in life or create positive changes in the way that they feel. Anyone who wants to achieve wellness despite deep sadness, arthritis, addictions, hearing voices, job losses, diabetes, burnouts, etc. Anything that you want to improve or work on in your life, um, you can use RAP to do it. So the RAP concept, skills, and personalized strategies that you discover within a peer group can be used in addition to other wellness and recovery strategies of your own. RAP is created by the individual for the individual. RAP focuses on what I can do and what has been working for me how I can support myself in circumstances, what my personal power and strengths are, how I can take control of my life, and how I am recovering from my wellness. RAP is built um, on the foundation of the five key concepts of recovery, which is hope, personal responsibility, education, self-advocacy, and support. What does hope mean? Hope can mean different things to deep, different people. Um, I'm hopeful that I will be able to live a productive life in society. Um, and that's my responsibility. You know, I am responsible for identifying the things that I need to do to take care of myself. Um, the education piece is basically, um, we are the experts on ourselves. We know exactly what works for us and what doesn't work for us. And so we have a responsibility to advocate by speaking up, by sharing these things with others so that they can support us we're continuing our um, recovery process. So wellness can mean different things to different people. But the five key concepts of recovery are the foundation of RAP. And we're gonna move on to the wellness tools. The wellness toolbox. Um, our wellness toolbox is an ever expanding collection of personal wellness tools. These are simple things that's accessible and safe things that we can do to um, recover our wellness. The daily plan um, has three parts to it. The first part is what is it, what am I like when I'm well? These are words that describe my wellness, such as I'm productive, I'm responsible. I'm friendly, I'm kind, I'm focused. They can also describe words um, that we use, we will use to describe ourselves when we are not doing well, such as off to myself, lonely, tired, you know, whatever it is. The second part is things that I do to stay well as possible. 
So this is a list of things that I will do throughout my day in order to take care of myself and feel the best possible. And then the third part is things that I might need to do on a particular day to stay well as possible. So the wellness tools that can go into the daily plan could be having at least one meal, you know, during the daytime. I usually like to eat breakfast in the morning uh, prior to me leaving out the house to, to go to work. Um, doing something fun throughout the day, laughing, um, talking, writing. Um, it could be any amount of different things. Singing songs, you know, um, reading books, getting some exercise. These are things that are wellness tools that helps me in my recovery. Daily plan part two are things that I know that I need to do every single day. Every single day, I know that I must take my medication. Um, I, I must go to work. I must um, eat something because if I don't eat anything, it's going to cause me to feel bad and I won't be able to do the things that I need to do. Um, you know, sometimes there's the extra part, part three, those extra things that I might need to do to take care of myself, um, which is maybe taking time off of work or going to see a health doctor, a physician, letting them know what's going on with me. Everyone's breath is going to look a little bit different. However, we may have some similar things in common that we do. The next part of rap is the stressors. The stresses are those little things that might happen externally that would cause us to have a day that's not so good. Um, there are several different things that could happen. Um, the action plan comes in when you are able to recognize that these things are happening and you put a plan in place so that it will not affect you as much as it could have if you wasn't prepared for it. <clears throat> So stresses are those unexpected things that happens in everyone's lives that can cause problems. If we don't pay attention to the stresses, stresses, we may find that we are having more difficulty with each other. Examples, a lost item, alcoholism, violence taking place. And the action plan um, that I will apply to some of those things are ask for help with finding the lost item or doing something that would prevent alcoholism um, such as going to a meeting contacting the sponsor then there's the early warning signs the early warning signs are um, not acknowledging things that's going on um, irritability avoiding responsibilities bickering, increased noise levels. Again, early warning signs could look different for different people. So some um, action plans that we can use when we recognize early warning signs could be meeting with a counselor, a clergy, or a trusted friend, taking breaks from doing the things that we are normally doing, um, reducing stress by going back to um, our wellness tools and looking at that list of things and saying, what can I do from this list that maybe I haven't did in a long time? Maybe this particular item will help me out and make me feel better. But um, you can also do something nice from other people. The next part of rap is when things are breaking down. These signs vary from family to family. Uh, what may mean things are breaking down for one family member may mean something, may mean a crisis to another. So if you recognize the signs and take actions to keep the situation from worsening, 
a crisis may be avoided. Some examples of crises is a crisis can be physical and verbal abuse, um, avoiding other people, um, being refused to um, be part of. But there's always an action, awareness tool, which is an action that you can use. Um, it might be holding a meeting with the person that you are experiencing these things with or attending a specific group for support. The next section of RAP is called the Crisis Plan and the Action Plan. Now, this is the only part of RAP that needs to be shared with others to work. Crisis is defined by the individual. Uh, we can use this part of the planning process for any life issue and may include direction for treatment of our medical issues. It is always a plan that we choose. We choose who supports us, what supports we want and do not want, and how we want to be supported by others, including medical professionals. These plans may vary or um, from one person to another. Um, they may also inform an, an advanced directive pad, which is a separate legal process defined by state laws This, um, the structure of the RAP crisis plan, which is the evidence plan, um, there's nine parts to it. The first part is what I'm like when I'm feeling well. And this sort of goes back to your wellness toolbox. I mean, your daily plan part one, words that describe me when I'm feeling my best. Then there's part two, signs I need supporters to step in. Um, part three, your supporters. Who are your supporters? Who would you like to be part of your support network? It's strongly suggested that we have at least five good supporters in our lives because we don't want to stress one person out. And then there may be somebody in your support network that you would trust to take care of your pet versus someone who does not like pets. And so you want to be sure that you specifically identify who your supporters are and what you want them to do. This will cut back on a whole lot of um, unnecessary bickering or complaining. And, and we don't want people to assume that we want X, Y, and Z to work in our lives. We, we want them to know exactly who we want to be um, part of our support network and specifically what we would have them to do. Part four of the crisis plan is the medications, the supplements, and the health care. What medications do you want to take? What works best for you? Are there any supplements that you use? And um, what about the health care? Is there any specific place that you would prefer to um, receive support from. Part five is the treatments and the complementary therapies piece. What, what type of treatments work for you? The more people know about your crisis plan, the better they will be able to support you and help you to get back on the road of recovery. Part seven is um, the hospitals or other treatment facilities. This is very important because some person, people may have had a bad experience at one hospital, but didn't have one at another hospital. So here you can identify the hospital or the treatment facilities that you prefer to go to to get the help that you need. Part eight, help from others. What exactly do you need help with? Only you can decide that, nobody else but you. So while you're well, think about the things that you may need help with in case you're not well and you need someone to come in and support you. And then you're gonna soon get better. And the last part of the crisis plan is in 
activate this plan. So this is the point that you are going to be able to identify again what it looks like when you're well and when do you want to say, I no longer need these people to take care of me. I got it. Okay, so after the crisis plan, um, we're going to take a look at some other things. Um, I, I, well, I just want to explain a little bit about the post-crisis plan. Um, again, how you want to feel when the crisis is over. What does that look like? What do you look like when you're out of the crisis and ready to use this plan? It's so important that others know this. Who are your supporters? Uh, what's going to happen when you arrive home? Will you need someone to be there to assist you with doing different things throughout the house? Um, taking a look at what you learned from your crisis, you know, looking through it. What did you recognize or you learn? So, you know, take a look at your wrap plan, what you have already created, you know, the daily plan, the wellness tools, the daily plan, the stressors, the early warning signs, as well as the crisis plan. But what did you learn through this? This may be a good time to update your wellness recovery um, action plan, adding some things to it, or maybe removing some things from it. So this is basically a overview of the Wellness Recovery Action Plan. Um, it's an awesome plan in which anyone can use to feel the way that they want to feel. Again, um, the five key concepts are the foundation of RAP. The five key concepts are hope, personal responsibility, education, self-advocacy and support think about that what does those five key concepts of recovery mean to you identify identifying the things that you would want to use your rep on is so important um, would you like to better manage your wellness your emotions would you want to use REF to help you build friendships and relationships or to connect with others? Whatever you want to use your REF for, you can do it. Um, your daily plan. Your daily plan is basically the things that you're going to do on a day-to-day -day basis to stay well. And you may just go back to your wellness toolbox. Take a look at that list of things. See if there's anything on that list that you would like to do to feel better and to improve your wellness. And you may also uh, think of other things that you can add to your wellness toolbox once you connect with other people and begin talking about it. The daily plan, parts one, two, and three, words to describe you when you're feeling your best things that you do on a day-to-day -day basis, and those extra things that you just might need to do or want to do. Stresses. What are stresses? Stresses are those things that can happen that would throw us off, that we can take action and do something about once we recognize this, what's going on. So being aware of your stresses allows you to take control and do something in order not to have a breakdown. Early warning signs, what does it look like? Reflect back over your wellness tools and your daily plan and see if there's anything on there that you are not doing or you may need to do more of. Identify what those things are. Always have an action plan to come up by reflecting back over your wrap plan and doing a little bit more of this or that. Then the when things are breaking down, you don't have to get to this point. <clears throat> as long as you follow your rap plan and you begin to speak up, reflect over your rap plan, you can prevent things from breaking down just like you can prevent having a crisis. 
this concludes my overview of the wellness recovery action plan i hope that i was able to explain some things that were from my perspective that has helped me rep is an evidence-based plan that you create for yourself remember no one can do it but you thanks for your time bye-bye